Hey, welcome back options traders. Good morning, everyone. And here's a good question that I get a lot from new traders. And that is why do options traders talk in terms of deltas and not shares? And it's a good question. There's actually an easy answer, but it requires a little bit more understanding of deltas. Now, if that's a new term to you, there is another video in this forum, actually on all of the Greeks, but you might wanna check that one out first to find out a lot of the details about deltas. But first, let's do at least a quick revisit of the concept of delta. Recall that delta shows an option's sensitivity to stock price changes. It's just a mathematical connection. So you want to think of delta as your exposure. How much exposure do you have in terms of risk? Is it a big risk if the stock price rises a dollar or falls a dollar? How much is that going to change your profits or losses. That's what we mean by exposure. Now, it turns out that stock always has a delta of one, and that's what makes stock easy to deal with, at least in terms of calculating profits and losses. So if you have 100 shares of stock, you've got 100 deltas. If you've got 500 shares, you have 500 deltas. The number of shares that you have compared to your deltas is always in a one-to-one -one ratio if you're dealing with shares of stock. So to understand it graphically, let's say that you own 100 shares of stock at 50. This is your risk graph. And what we're looking at here are various stock prices on the horizontal and the resulting profits and losses. So notice if you paid $50 for the shares, that your risk graph right here in blue lines up at zero. And that just means you have no gains and no losses. But what happens if the stock price rises from, let's say, 50 to 51? Line up here at 51, trace a line up to the blue curve, and it shows that we would have a gain of $100. Why? It was a $1 change in the stock times 100 deltas, or in this case, times 100 shares. Easy to figure out. If the stock price rises from 50 to 52, that's a $2 change. We trace a line up to the blue, and there we go. $200 gain in our position. And that's because we had a $2 change in the stock times 100 deltas. What if the stock rises from 50 to 53? That's a $3 change. Trace a line up to the blue curve, and it's showing that we have a $300 gain. So it really shouldn't come as a surprise if you own 100 shares of Microsoft, Every time that Microsoft rises, well, you own the very thing that we're measuring. Obviously, you're moving dollar for dollar with the stock. But that also means that you will lose in equal proportions to the downside. Let's say that the stock falls from 50 to 48. That's a $2 fall, and we trace a line, in this case, down to the curve, and it shows we would be minus 200. And that's because it's a minus $2 change in the stock times our 100 deltas. So again, stock is very easy to figure out. Now, another reason to understand that is that it's a straight line. It looks just like a ruler. And that's telling you that there's no changes in your answer. It's always 100 deltas, no matter where we measure. So what would happen if we had instead 20 shares? See, now our exposure becomes very flat. We don't have as much risk. Every time the stock rises a buck, we're only gonna make 20 bucks. It falls a dollar. We're gonna lose 20 bucks. There's not as much risk, not as much exposure. And do you see how the line is now very flat? That's a way to understand there's not as much sensitivity here to changes in the stock's price. But if we buy 100 shares, which we just saw, now that line gets a little more peaked. If we buy 200 shares, it gets even steeper. Buy 300 shares, it gets even steeper. So this is another important concept. As you increase the number of deltas, your profit and loss diagram starts to get more peaked. And that's why we're seeing it move from a very flat position down here in blue to a very steep position up here in red. And that's simply because we have far more deltas up here than we do down here. So your stock profit and loss diagram is always determined by the number of shares. Again, it's very easy. And that's why traders don't talk about deltas with shares. We could, but it's just as easy to say, I have 300 shares of stock. 
All right, we know it's always 300 deltas. And that's because the number of shares equals the delta. Now, your short shares of stock are the same idea, just in the opposite direction. Let's say that you shorted 100 shares of stock at 50. Now, this becomes your profit and loss diagram. Notice how it's leaning this way to the left instead of out this way to the right, like we saw with long shares. And that's because we are short 100 shares of stock, or minus 100, and therefore we have minus 100 deltas. That just means everything's going to be inverted. So if the stock price falls from 50 in this direction, we're actually going into gains. Short shares like it when stock prices fall. On the other hand, if the stock price rises, we end up going into losses. We're just working on an inverted scale, or we've made it opposite, and that's why we have minus 100 deltas. So once again, shares of stock, whether they're long or short, are very easy to figure out in terms of your exposure. However, that's not true for options. And that's why options traders talk about deltas. So let's say that you buy 10 call options. Yes, you might say that your exercise value is 1,000 shares. If you exercise all 10 contracts, you will be long 1,000 shares. It's just what we call the total exercise value. And this is, again, what kind of throws the new traders. They'll say, well, how come we can't say that we have 1,000 shares? Or that my exposure is 1,000 shares because that's ultimately what I'm controlling. Well, that's sort of true, but it's only at a specific point in time. And that means at expiration, you'll have 1,000 deltas if it's in the money. So notice there's a couple of conditions. You need to be in the money, and you've got to be very close to expiration. And if that's true, yes, you could say that your exposure or that your deltas are getting very close to 1,000. But that's not normally going to be the case. And that means that today's exposure isn't necessarily 1,000 shares. Depending on where the stock is, your exposure might be 20 deltas or 50 or 70. In other words, your option sensitivity to stock price changes, and that's delta. That's why options traders talk in terms of delta. So for instance, let's say that you buy a $50 call for $10. This is your risk graph, or at least this is the risk graph that most new traders think that they're exposed to. Well, remember, this risk graph is only at expiration. That's when you get this very straight-lined, hard-edged hockey stick graph. Here's our bend right here at 50. And notice that if the stock is above 50 at expiration, yes, we're leaning out here on this same angle as if we had 100 shares. We have 100 deltas in this range, but only at expiration. If the stock is below our 50 strike, we have zero deltas. That's why we're flat down here. So at expiration, you either have zero deltas down here, or you've got 100 deltas along this angled portion. But again, that's only at a very small sliver in time, going right into the closing bell on expiration Friday. But today, you're not going to look like this. You might look like this. This is now your risk graph. So let's say that the stock is down here at 30. Well, you're not as peaked as you are up here. You certainly don't have 100 deltas. You can see that the angle of this red line is fairly flat. So down in this range, we'd have to calculate what your delta is. And a way to conceptualize that is let's put a couple of dots real close to the current stock price. Let's connect them with a ruler, but only in this range. And we'll see that if we were to measure this line, it might come up to be 20 shares. So we would say that the option has 20 deltas. It's only behaving like 20 shares, but just in this very small range. So that means that if we have 10 call options, you shouldn't really say that you have 1,000 deltas or exposure as if you had 1,000 shares. It's behaving more like 200 shares. 20 deltas, or 20%, times the 1,000 shares that you control is more like 200 deltas. All right, well, what if the stock price rises up here towards 50? Notice that the angle of this red line is a lot steeper through here than it was back in here. 
So let's measure it. Let's put a couple of dots real close to the current stock price. We'll connect those dots with a ruler. But remember, we're just looking right in this small area. And we might say, you know what? This red line is looking more like 50 shares of stock. So we'll say that it has a 50 delta, or let's call it 50%. So again, if you have 10 calls, yeah, you're controlling 1,000 shares, but it's only got an exposure or a delta of 50. It's behaving more like 500 shares. So do you see how it's changing because the red line is curved? It's not a straight line like it was with the shares of stock. What if the stock gets way up here? Now you can see that this red line is starting to get pretty parallel to the blue. The blue is plus 100, so we should be getting pretty close to 100 deltas. Let's measure it. We put a couple of dots down here. We're just looking at this very small section. And if we connect those dots, we might say, yeah, you know, this red line is about like 95 shares. And so we would say the option has 95 deltas. Think of it as 95% of the contract value. So if you have 10 calls, again, 1,000 shares, it's exercisable into, but it's behaving more like 95% of that or 950 deltas. So if the stock price rises a buck here, you're going to be up about 950 bucks. Falls a dollar, you're going to lose about 950 bucks. Your exposure is more like 950 shares, not 1,000 shares. So the thing to remember is that delta equals exposure. The number of contracts you buy doesn't necessarily represent your exposure. It might represent how many shares you can exercise into if you decide to, but that doesn't mean it's behaving like that number of shares today. So what we're really trying to find out with Delta is how sensitive are your profits and losses relative to changes in the stock's price. That's what you have to track as an options trader and as a good risk manager. And what's the answer? Delta. And now you see why options traders talk in terms of deltas and not the number of shares that the contracts control. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.